Welcome everyone to a, another edition of the Mblex Test Prep live stream. Uh, I am David, uh, your host on this fabulous journey uh, through the world of the Massage and Bodywork Licensing Exam. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been a little busy the past few months, which is the um, which is the only reason I haven't really done um, a live stream in a while. So um, I'm here. Uh, I know this was kind of spur of the moment thing. Nobody's um, nobody's really anticipating a live stream going on, but um, here I am. So we'll, we'll just um, we'll just wait for people to join in. Um, and we'll see what we can do. So before I begin, exciting news. It's almost 2018. I now have the 2018 edition of the MBLEX uh, Test Prep Study Guide. MBLEX Test Prep Comprehensive Study Guide and Workbook, the 2018 edition. So this book is pretty similar to the 2017 edition. Uh, just a lot more um, information, uh, more pictures, brand new pictures that I've added in here. Like here's one of bursitis that I didn't have in there before. Um, new practice tests. Uh, what else do I have? Um, I don't know. Diabetes. Talk to that one. Um, added some stuff about, uh, let me see if I can show you. A lot of great stuff in here. Uh, added added a bunch about uh, me medical treatments. Uh, multitasking, not my so like medical treatments um, and stuff like that. Um, all kinds of fun stuff that you can find in this book right here. Inblex Test Prep Comprehensive Study Guide and Workbook 2018 Edition. Go to my website, Inblex Test Prep. Dot com or um, check out uh, Amazon.com is where you can buy all of this. And of course, with your purchase of this study guide, you get unlimited um, online practice tests. Unlimited. You get online flashcards. Um, you get video lectures where you, I talk to you and, and teach you all this stuff. So it's, it's definitely um, worth the uh, investment if you will. So I've got that. What something else I've got? Another book, Mblex Test Prep 10 Mblex ta Practice Tests and Flashcards. I can't, I can't talk. So basically it's just 10 practice tests that I have written uh, that talk about the Mblex, uh, that cover lots and lots of stuff that you could potentially see on the Mblex. Um, also, flashcards. Now, here's how these flashcards work. On one side, you've got the term with, with the lines and everything. Lines. Eh, it might be a little hard to see. But then, you flip the page, and there is the definition. So, India treatments, okay. Ayurveda. So basically all you have to do is cut them out and you've got pre-made flashcards. That saves you a ton of time, a ton of energy. Um, I'm all about efficiency and effectiveness and that's the way to do it. So um, I've got both of those books available. I am thirsty. Then go get a drink of water. No. <laughs> I want juice. We don't have it, I'm sorry. My boy is talking apparently. I don't he wants to eat. We don't have it. I'm sorry. Oh, um, yeah. I'm. I'm just kind of waiting for questions. Um, any anything you guys can can ask me. I'm available. I'm. I'm ready to go. I hear you, Owen. I would appreciate it if you would stop. I will get you something to drink in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. All right, so what do you got? I'm, I'm here to answer your questions about the Mblex. I'll talk about anything you want. Oh, something else I've got. Uh, I can't can't forget about this. I've got a podcast, the Mblex Test Prep Podcast. Uh, it's it's going to be you know usually between 20, 30 minutes each episode um, where I talk about lots of stuff 
uh, that you could potentially see on the MYX, and you definitely learn a thing or two. I've got three episodes up right now, uh, so we're in the beginning stages of getting that out, but uh, the last episode that I did was all about the heart. I also, in, in each podcast episode, I talk about, I do a question of the week where I discuss how to break down a question, a practice test question, and um, how to figure out the answer. So definitely check it out. It's completely free. Just look for it on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn. It's on all of them. Uh, you can't miss it. Just search for Mblex Test Prep Podcast, and um, and you'll find it. And it's like, like I said, about half an hour once a week. I usually try to do Thursdays. Uh, Thursday seems to be a seems to be a good day to do a, a podcast, release a podcast. So definitely check those out. Uh, you might learn a thing or two. Might. So any questions? Are there are there any questions that I mean? I'm here. I'm here to answer your questions. Seeing if there's any, uh, if there are any test questions or any questions from from anybody, really. Um, what do you think? Anyone? Anything? So if not, I'm just going to talk, because that's typically what I do. I, li I like to talk. Can I download the podcast to YouTube? Um, yeah, that might, that might be something I can look into, um, releasing it on YouTube. Uh, but again, it is available on SoundCloud. If you go to my website, mblextestprep.com, there is a little section there uh, where, where you can actually click on it's the section is titled podcast right at the top you click on that and there's a little player on the on the web page that um that you can actually listen to the podcast on that way so uh if if you want to do it in a web browser that's the way to do it uh you can go to soundcloud.com and search for inblex test prep podcast uh that'll bring it up too but yeah i mean that's that's what i would do but that is a good idea. I might uh, might take the time to put those podcasts on YouTube. Um, yeah. So what do you think? Any questions about the Mblex? About the Mblex. Yeah, it's been it's been a while since I since I've done a live stream. We're trying to sell our house right now. Um, it's always I've, I've been so preoccupied trying to keep the house clean and and showing it and all that stuff. But it's been a while since I've done that. Um, overwhelmed with studying, yeah. I mean that can happen. Now the fun thing about my study guide, this study guide, Inblex Test Prep Comprehensive Study Guide and Workbook 2018 edition, available on InblexTestPrep.com. Um, I give you the most important information um, that you could possibly see. I, I don't give you a bunch of information that's not um, not important. I, I don't give you information that you don't need. So I make it much easier for you to get that information and help you learn it, uh, especially if you watch those video lectures that I've got uh, as part of that study guide, which you can get uh, if, if you purchase the study guide. So. Um, the podcast kind of kind of along the same lines of those those video lectures I go maybe a little more in depth in the in some of the podcast episodes because I have more time um, I, don't, I don't have to try to keep my uh, my video size down um, so I, I can go a lot more in depth on, on a lot of that stuff just listen to the episode on the heart you'll you'll see what I mean um, so the when it comes to studying and feeling overwhelmed, uh, something I like to do is just, I know it's, it's going to sound so cliche, but just take it one step at a time, one bit of information at a time. Um, the, the more you stress out about, you know, you think about the whole overall picture when it comes to studying and that can cause you to stress out. Just, just 
you remind yourself, like, I only need to study this part right now. Like, all I need to worry about is the heart. Like, what are the structures of the heart? And then you focus on that little bit. And once you got that down, then you can move on to, say, the arteries and the veins, the major arteries and veins of the body. Uh, and then once you got those, then you move on. Just, just try to keep everything kind of small. Small, small, small is good. Again, when you start thinking about that big, huge picture where you got to learn everything, then you start to stress out uh, and it starts to feel overwhelming. So uh, just take it one step at a time, only focus on one piece of information at a time, and that makes it a lot easier uh, to study, at least for me. Uh, so just try, and try it out. Just remember it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, studying does take a while to do, so... I mean, it's it's just one of those things. You you got to put in your time. You got to make sure you know the information before you start moving on. It's starting to get dark in here, isn't it? There we go. It's a little better. Now, fun 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 thing about fall and winter. It gets really dark really early. I'm much more of a summer guy. I love, I love the heat and I love the sun being out until nine o'clock at night. Um, so the sun's I don't know getting kind of low. All right, Patrice Murphy. Uh, fail my first time and taking the exam again soon. How can you, how can you bet the time when taking, I'll assume you say, how can you beat the time um, when taking the exam? So the, the time limit, I believe it's two hours. You have two hours to finish the MBLEX. Uh, sometimes they change things in the MBLEX. And, it's not really, you know, that important. Here's here's the fun thing about the MBLEX. You have 100 questions on the MBLEX, and you have two hours to do it. That's over uh, a minute per question. Now, the fun fun thing about um, that test is sometimes you, you, I mean, you just can't skip questions. So once you get that question, you have to answer that question before you are able to move on. You can't move on and then come back to that question later like you can on like a paper test or something like that while you're in school. Um, so what I do with any test that I am able to, like if I, on the MBLEX, you, you should, if your test is, um, hey, Owen, shh. Uh, if, if your test is given to you by Pearson View, uh, I'm pretty sure it will be. Uh, it's a, one, of, one of, if not the, major testing centers uh, in this country. Um, they will give you a laminated piece of paper, uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, and a marker. So what I do, um, and this really helps with timing. I know it, it's going to seem counterintuitive. Just trust me, this helps with timing. Before I even start looking at a question, um, at the very beginning of your test, what you want to do on that piece of paper, you want to write down as many test taking techniques as you can remember. And what that does, when you come across a question that you're having trouble with, you can look back at that list that you made, stuff like identify your keywords, uh, take your time, that's a big one, um, read the entire question, uh, read every answer before you try answering it. Uh, you write down stuff like that, and then, you know, when you come up to one of those questions that you are a little confused about, you look back at that list, and, you, and then just check them off. Like, am I reading every single word in this question? Then you read every single word. You say, yes, I read every single word. What am I, what are the key words that I'm identifying? Then you read through them, and then in your head, identify your key words. Like, um... Oh, uh, what's a quick here? I'll, I'll, one thing about having these books right in front of me, I can actually open them up and find a test question. Uh, let's see, what's a good question? Yes, read read the entire question is one of the biggest things that you need to do when you're taking this test, and that's a that is one of the reasons that people don't get questions right. Is they start reading through a test question, they don't read every word. They assume that they know what, it, what the uh, question is asking when it's actually asking something completely different. 
So make sure you are reading every single word in every single question. Read it multiple times if you have to. Take your time reading each question. Now, so on the podcast, uh, the latest episode of the podcast, um, I, I, I read, in the question of the week segment, I read kind of a long question. And I show you, I tell you, how you can break that down into a really simple question. Unfortunately, on the MLEX, a lot of the questions are kind of wordy. They're, they're long. They have multiple sentences. Uh, a lot of information is completely useless. So it's, it's just giving you a lot of junk information that isn't really important to the question. So reading every word, trying to break it down into simple terms, Try to figure out exactly what the question is, is asking is one of the most important things you can do, especially with those long questions. All right. Uh, all right, identifying uh, keywords. Here's a good one. Number five on practice test three. In my brand new book, Imblex Test Prep, Comprehensive Study Guide and Workbook 2018 Edition, which you can find on imblextestprep.com or amazon.com. Search for it. Um, Question number five, elbow extension and shoulder extension is performed by the following muscle. All right, so there are <clears throat> a few key words there. Three, really, maybe four key words. Elbow extension, those are two key words, and shoulder extension are the other two key words. So that's basically telling you what the question is asking you. It's, it's asking about elbow extension and shoulder extension. Now, you could confuse extension with flexion, right? I mean, that's not that big of a mistake to make. I mean, it's a big mistake to make when you're trying to, but it, I mean, it's, it's easy to make that mistake, is what I should say. Um, and you don't want to do that. So you read each question slowly, identify those key words, and that can help you figure out the answer. So make sure you're taking your time. So elbow extension, I'm going to read that. I'm going to think, okay, how do I extend my elbow? Well, I know that this is flexion, right? I'm decreasing the angle of that joint. This is 180 degrees. I'm making it 90 degrees. I just flex the elbow. So the opposite of flexion is extension. So I'm taking it from 90 degrees back to 180. So straightening your elbow is extending it, okay? Um, Extending your shoulder, kind of the same thing. Now if, I, if I were to stand like this, right, that is 180 degrees, a straight line. Now if I bring, bring my shoulder up like this, that makes it 90 degrees. Right? So I just flex my shoulder. Opposite of flexion, extension. Take it the opposite way. Take it back. So that's extension of the shoulder. So I'm looking for a muscle that extends the elbow and extends the shoulder. So I identified my keywords, I thought about what those keywords mean, and then I identified what those specific actions are and on, on which it joins. So I'm looking for a muscle that extends my elbow, right, extends the elbow, and extends the shoulder. Now if, if you know uh, your muscles, you probably already know it, right? I mean, there are only a couple muscles you need to know that actually extend the elbow. Nice bruise there. Contusion. Nice contusion there. Got that from playing basketball. Um, I lost that game. By the way. Uh, so there are only a couple muscles you need to know that, that extend the elbow. Main one, triceps brachii. So triceps brachii also crosses the shoulder. The long head of the triceps attaches to the infraglenoid tubercle on the scapula. So it crosses the shoulder. So when it contracts, it will also pull the shoulder back, right? So identifying those keywords, taking the time to identify those keywords, read every word in that question, identify the keywords, helped me figure out what the answer is. And I didn't even look at the, at the possible choices, but I know that that's the answer because I have you know, studied and I, I teach this stuff and I write books about it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's one of the most important things you can do. Something else you don't want to do, do not change your answers. Uh, so that, that is something that a lot of people do when they take their tests. They change their answers. 
Now this drives me nuts. Uh, not sure if I've ever mentioned this before. Um, back when I was uh, an instructor, I uh, I was teaching the introductory class. Uh, like three students, I had three students in that class. So I was teaching the intro class, and um, first thing we we teach them is anatomy and physiology because you got you got to know anatomy and physiology before you can actually start massaging. Got to know the body. Uh, so we give them this quiz in anatomy and physiology, and one student, um, we go over the quiz in class, I grade it, then we go over it, and um, during the course of us going over it, he figures out that he changed almost every answer on this quiz. And when he changed the answer, he got the answer wrong. And if he didn't change it, uh, if he hadn't changed those answers, he would have gotten most of them right. So. It, it, he got really mad at himself. He picked up all of his stuff, his backpack, his books, and he left the class. He walked out. And I chased him down. I'm like, man, what's going on? He's like, I'm, I'm just mad at myself. I changed all those answers. I'm like, well, why did you do that? Don't do that. It's, it's so easy not to change an answer. Just don't do anything. See, here's why you don't want to change answers. When you change an answer, uh, you start second-guessing yourself. When you start second-guessing yourself, you're going to do that with every question. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure it's this, but it could also be this, couldn't it? When in reality, that's not how it works at all. It's, it's almost every question you get, it's going to be, this is the answer. That's it. It couldn't really be any of the others. There might be one that's kind of close, but not the answer. Um, now, unfortunately, when I took my Mblex, I, I may or may not have had a question that had uh, two, two uh, right answers on it, and I know they're both right. I can't tell you which question it is. But, um, so through, throughout his entire school, I wasn't his, his main instructor. Um, and I taught his intro class, and then I taught his test prep class at the end of his program. So in between, when I would sub in that class, um, I would tell him, do not change your answers. Don't change your answers. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not that hard. I said, just don't change your answers. And of course, he would change his answers on every test, and he would miss a few questions. Now, this was back when, um, in, in Nevada anyway, or actually all over the country, uh, you didn't have to take the MBLEX. You could take the national exam to get your state licensure. Uh, so we we did the, the national exam. So uh, minimum score you had to get on the national exam was 300. Uh, I, I don't know what the highest score possible was. They never tell you. Um, Mblex is 900, but now you don't find out what you get on the Mblex. Oh, really nice of them. Um, they, they say it's just not important for you to know. Well, for some people, like me, it actually is kind of important. Um, anyway, so you needed 300. He took his national exam. All he had to do was get 300 points. And, of course, he kept changing answers on that test, and he ended up failing it by, the first time he failed it by four points four points, and he would have passed it. And he would be a licensed massage therapist now if he wouldn't have changed his answers on that test. He took it a, a second time. He took it a second time, did the exact same thing, changed answers again, and he knew he was doing it too, as he was doing it. Changed his answers. He failed that test again by five points. So do not change your answers. Don't do it. Do not change your answers. There are only a couple instances where it's actually okay for you to change your answers. If you misread the question, it's all right for you to change your answers. If you thought it said one thing and it actually says another thing, you can change your answer based on, on you know, your revelation that it's, that it's saying something else. Um, if you misread one of the answers, it's okay to change your answer. Otherwise, don't change your answer. Just don't do it. So that's another thing you need to write down on that piece of paper uh, at the very beginning of your Mblex. Um, do not change answers. Underline it. Put stars next to it. Make, it. make it the biggest thing possible. So read the entire question. Identify your keywords. Do not change your answers. Take your time. Breathe. Relax. Do all those. And, and you won't worry about the time. So like I said, there are going to be easy questions. And there are going to be hard questions. Now when you start getting those hard questions, don't get, don't get stressed out about it. And here's the reason why. Once, once you start getting those hard questions, that means that you're actually doing pretty well on the test. 
the test changes. It adapts to how well you're doing on the test. So if you get a bunch of questions right in a row, then the questions start getting a little harder. Uh, so when you get those hard questions, you know you're actually doing pretty well. So if you get a, you know, one of those hard questions wrong and it gives you an easy question, you know, such as like, but that just, again, don't get stressed out about the hard question. You know, I had questions on my exam that I didn't know the answer to. You know, stuff that I had never seen before. It's, it's, that's just how it works. So when you get the hard questions, just remember, there's a reason they're giving you the hard questions. It's because you're getting the easy questions right. So each, quest, each question has a different point value. So again, it's uh, 600 or 630, excuse me, 630, is the score that you need to get on the MLEX to pass it. So it, it just kind of accumulates, like this question might be worth 10 points, this might be worth 15. The harder the question, the more the points uh, that that question is worth. So you get the hard questions, that means you're doing well. Okay. Anyway, that was kind of a long rant, wasn't it? Um, any other questions? What do you got? I will say, also, I don't have a copy of it yet. Uh, it's in the mail. But I do have a brand new kinesiology book. It is called Kinesiology Made Easy. So, um, basically what it is, kinesiology made easy. And look at that. Oh, man. Look at how pretty those pictures are. <laughs> nice color photos. Um, basically, it goes over the uh, most of the major muscles in the body um, the smaller muscles I left out um, but like look at that man man look at this also talks about the muscular system the nervous system and the skeletal system so you get all of those bony landmarks beautiful color photographs in this book uh, it, it, it does not look like this that's this is the proof copy. So this is the, the copy that I used to make sure there weren't any typos or, or anything in there. But this is what that book looks like. So this is also available on Amazon.com or MblexTestPrep.com. So definitely check those out. Uh, if you have kinesiology coming up, that's a big help. Trust me. Um, so that's available. Again, I do have the Emblex Test Prep podcast. Make sure you search for that on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, tune in, or just go to my website, mblextestprep.com, and you can listen to it there. Uh, what else do I have? Um, again, Mblex Test Prep Comprehensive Study Guide and Workbook 2018 edition. You can find that on mblextestprep.com or amazon.com. Uh, fun thing about my study guide, I'm the only one that uses um, actual legitimate reviews on my books. Uh, I've noticed, so... Uh, so you know that people that are leaving reviews on my books actually know what they're talking about, are actual educators, former massage students, stuff like that, uh, people preparing for the MBLEX, they wouldn't lie to you. And of course I've got MBLEX Test Prep 10, MBLEX Practice Tests, and flashcards with pre-made flashcards in them. Make sure you check that out also on MBLEXTestPrep.com or Amazon.com. So any questions? What do you got? Yeah, the pictures are the bomb.com. It's, uh, I, I just can't get over how beautiful they look. And I, I know sometimes I, I'm, see, here's the problem with, with this. It's a business. I'm, I am trying to make money here. Um, it's how I make a living is by writing these books, selling them to you as students. Uh, unfortunately, the cost of printing, um, prohibits me from making my regular study guide full color. Uh, the kinesiology book is 150 pages. This one is about 300. Um, it's, it's just not cost effective. So it, it's, if you're able to make the same amount of money as I make on this book, um, or on, yeah, to be able to make the same amount of money on this book, if I use color photos, I'd have to charge $100 a copy. 
and that ain't gonna happen. So, I'm, the, that's the only thing I complain about with this book is just the black and white photos. But, but hey, fun thing about this book. There's, hold on, there's little old me uh, on the back, so you know that I'm actually the author. Uh, fun thing about this book: you order this study guide, you get the Kindle version or the ebook version completely free. 100% free, and there are color photos in that, uh, so it's I mean, that alone. Having two copies of the book, you got the physical copy and the Kindle version, absolutely free with all those color photos. So you can see all of the all the fun stuff, like the decubitus ulcer that has like lots of greens and yellows and grays in it. Yeah, that's can't beat it, cannot beat it. So make sure you check that out. Pick it up on Amazon. You only get the ebook version free if you buy it on Amazon. Uh, from the, uh, the Amazon uh, seller, I guess, <laughs> Amazon seller. Uh, so make sure you pick that up. It's, it's definitely worth um, worth it to have just two copies of it, one on your phone so you can study while you're on the go or um, one to take to class or, or whatever. Um, make sure you tell your school. If you are still in school, make sure you tell your school, your instructor, about my study guide um, would be much appreciated, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just a small guy. I'm my own business, just trying to make a living out here. So, making schools aware of it definitely helps out. So, any other any other questions um, while I'm still here? Any other any questions? Anything you want me to cover? Anything you want me to talk about? Because obviously, I can talk. No problem talking. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's not good. Any other, any other question? Anything you want me to talk about? Anything you want me to discuss or teach you while I'm still here? Any any phrases that help with kinesiology? Oh, maybe. Um, I see. I have an easy way to remember how many vertebrae are in each region of the vertebral column. So you have uh, your three main regions of the. Uh, sorry, just random people texting me. You have three main reasons. Okay, let me start over. <laughs> you have three main regions of the vertebral column. You have the cervical region the thoracic region, and the lumbar region. And each one of those has a different number of vertebrae in them. So my easy way to remember uh, is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. goes from top to bottom. So the cervical region has seven vertebrae in it, right? C1 through C7. You have breakfast at seven, right? The thoracic region has 12 vertebrae. You have lunch at 12. The lumbar region has five vertebrae. You have dinner at five. So it's just that easy. So cervical, seven. Thoracic, 12. Lumbar, five. Breakfast, seven. Lunch, 12. Dinner, five. So that's possibly an easy way to remember that. What is PGOGO -G -O quick? Explain that one to me. I've never seen that one. P-G-O-G-O -G -O quick. Let's see if I can figure it out. Hmm. No, I got I got nothing for that one. All right, let's let's talk about the carpals. I may have gone over this before. We've gone over the carpals before. Um, something else you can you can kind of remember is this little saying, uh, if you're trying to remember the carpals. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So that tells you the order of the carpals, and there is an actual order of the carpals. A lot of people don't are, don't don't know that there's a specific way the carpals are aligned. So there are two lines of carpals, a proximal line that has four carpals, and a distal line that has four carpals. So the proximal line is going to be this line 
closer to your forearm, the distal line is going to be this line. Proximal line, distal line, further away. So the order of the carpals goes from lateral to medial on both lines. So it starts with some, then lovers, then try, then positions. Then it jumps back over here. That they can't handle. So I'll, I'll even write those in here. Let's see how, how well my uh, pen works. Hey, it works pretty well. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So that tells you the order of the carpals. So over here, first carpal, scaphoid. That articulates with the radius. Then we got lunate. It's kind of articulates with the radius. The more you articulate with the you know. Uh, some lovers try, it's triquetrum, uh, some, some people, yeah. it's driving me nuts, uh, used, to, used to work with people that would call it triquetrium, it's triquetrum. Some lovers try, so that's triquetrum, P, positions, that is pisiform. Pisiform is a sesamoid bone, that's important, you should know that. Pisiform, positions, then we jump back over here onto the distal line. That, this, this bone articulates with the metacarpal of the thumb to make the saddle joint, only place in the body you find a saddle joint. That is the trapezium. That, they. Now this one kind of sounds like a, a big muscle in your back. This is trapezoid, kind of like trapezius. That, they, trapezoid. C, can't, it's capitate, and then H, handle, hamate. So that's something that, to help you kind of remember. Oops, there we go. Always weird trying to figure out where to put my hand watching the screen. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. So you can think of little ways to... to um, to remember stuff like that. Um, oh, here's a good one. So on the, uh, I used to have my skeleton over here. I told you I'm, we're moving, so I, I had to pack everything away. I'll do it. Okay. So on the, yeah, that's good. there's my my skull, by the way. On the medial proximal. Ugh, not as easy as you would think. Okay, medial proximal shaft of the tibia, we have a spot where three muscles insert. Uh, the name of that spot, name of that tendon, is called the pes anserinus. So it kind of goes like this. Just like that. Pes anserinus. So there is an easy way for, for me to remember which muscles attached to the pes anserinus. I just think of the term sergeant goosefoot, the abbreviation for sergeant, SGT. So that tells me the three muscles that attach to the pes anserinus. Now why, why do we say goosefoot? Because it looks like a goose's foot and pes anserinus literally means goosefoot. Pes foot, anserinus, goose, you get it, whatever. Uh, so, sergeant, goose foot. So, the three muscles. Longest yeah. muscle in the body, starts with an S, <laughs> is sartorius. Then we got a muscle that starts with a G on the medial portion of the thigh. It's one of our adductor muscles. It's the only one, only adductor muscle that crosses the knee, actually. It is gracilis. And then this last one, it actually starts with an S, but features a T pretty prominently in its name. It is one of our hamstring muscles. About eh, not as easy to write on your leg as you would think with this pen. Semi-tendinosis. SGT. Sartorius gracilis semi-tendinosis. Sergeant Goosefoot. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Otherwise, I just drew on myself for nothing. For nothing.
But I mean, there, there, like I said, there, there are ways for you to remember a lot of that stuff. And it's just thinking like, wh why is this one structure? Why is this muscle named the way it's named? Why is this tendon, the pes anserinus, named the way it's named? Uh, pes anserinus, goose foot. It kind of looks like a goose's foot. What are the three muscles that attach there? The S, G, S, S, G. Well, there's a T. Sergeant. Sergeant. Goose foot. You remember weird stuff like that. Uh, makes it a lot easier for you to, to grasp it. To hold on to it. To coddle it. So hopefully that helped. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all I can think of at the at the moment. I'm I'm sure there are others. I'm, sh I'm absolutely sure there are others. What is uh, P G O G O quick? You didn't explain that one to me. What what does it mean? Because I'm I'm all for stuff like that. Like I. Not not really kinesiology related, but here's here's another one. So when we're talking to you know the nervous system and our nervous impulses, uh, I think of the word same, and that tells me uh, which impulse is which. So our sensory impulse is also called an afferent impulse. Sensory impulses travel towards the brain. Okay. Our motor impulse is also known as an efferent impulse. It travels away from the brain down to the body to tell us how to respond to a stimulus. So just stupid stuff like that. Sensory afferent, motor efferent. And you find ways to match up stuff like that. You can, you can create terms like that um, to help you remember. Which is which? So definitely play with that and see what you can figure out. Um, and then share it. Share it with people. Share it with me so I can share it with people. Because um, I probably have a bigger audience uh, than, than my students. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely figure that stuff out. Um, yeah. So I am going to uh, sign out. Arrivederci, as they say, and one last time before I leave, don't forget mblextestprep.com, comprehensive study guide and workbook 2018 edition available on amazon.com or mblextestprep.com. Uh, Mblex test prep, 10 Mblex practice tests and flashcards also available on amazon.com or mblextestprep.com. Kinesiology made easy, also available on amazon.com or mblextestprep.com. Uh, and subscribe to the Inblex Test Prep podcast. Um, again, available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, any of them. So go check them out. All right, until next time, this is David. Piriformis, Jamella Superior, Obturator, Internus, Jamella Inferior, Quadratus, uh, Morris. Okay. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. The, the deep six. Yep, yeah, that's a good one. So definitely think of stuff like that. That's that's good. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out of here. Take it easy.